Now let's see, case number eight is a 40-year-old female with a liver lesion. Right. Well, that doesn't look like normal liver, does it? Uh, no. I mean, I'm not a, a gastrointestinal pathologist, but I'm pretty sure liver is not supposed to look like that. There is a little bit, I guess there's a capsule out here, the liver, I believe. And then here's some background hepatocytes. And then that goes away, and we got something else. And it looks like it's just like this... Um... It's almost hard to even like say it's like a spindle cell thing. You just see like the nuclei, because the fibers aren't like separating very well. They're just very tightly packed. Uh huh. Um, and then you see some, I believe, fat in there still. Yeah, there is some fat in there. Let me see if I can get the the white there. That's better. The white balance is a little bit too bright, so that's better. So yeah, what what kind of if you had to describe the kind of the color or hue of the background, ignoring the cells and the vessels and the fat and stuff, but this. This bluish pink kind of background, are there any words, what, what visual word would come to your mind? Uh, There's an answer of what it's supposed to look like, but again, <laughs> what it looks like to you is more useful and meaningful right. to you, actually. I mean, I don't know, like, see that, see how blue that looks there? Right. It, maybe, I don't know. It's like a periwinkle blue something, I... Oh, I like that periwinkle blue. We're yeah. I'm learning a bunch of new stuff. I'm going to have to, like, right. when I get videos in the future, I'll be like, as my former resident, Terrace Salin, used to say, periwinkle blue color is very characteristic. It's great. All right, man. Um, uh, yeah, other than that, I... Like... Some people describe this as chondromyxoid. Yeah. Because okay. it's kind of bluish and smudgy. And, you know, I feel like chondroid and myxoid really can overlap. Sometimes it's, I don't know how to describe it, but it looks dense, right? Like, myxoid looks like real loose, gooey stuff right. that you could think would just fall apart. And chondroid is very like dense looking. And I don't know how to, if you're beginning at, at pathology and you're like, what are you guys talking about? How could it be dense or loose? I don't know how to explain it, but there are certain times where the, the density of a color under the microscope looks like if you touched it, it would be hard versus soft. And maybe that means that we've been doing pathology too long, that we're drinking our own Kool-Aid and, and believing the voodoo. But in any case, yeah, this is kind of dense, homogenous looking pinkish blue background that is effacing and wiping out the liver. And when you see that, that is this entity till you prove it's something else, at least in my book. Um, okay, so what did you think the diagnosis was? Did you figure it out? This is challenging here, especially I think in, in this context, it can be challenging. Uh, well, I'm going to say I had to page through my textbook. No, nothing wrong with that, man. Um, but I think this is an epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. That's exactly what it is. Very good. Epithelioid hemangioendothelioma, and they are um, vascular neoplasms of intermediate malignant potential is what all of the different hemangioendotheliomas, and by the way, they're, they're not just, there are multiple different hemangioendotheliomas, and they are not related. They are all just called hemangioendothelioma because they're vascular tumors that are not fully aggressively malignant like angiosarcoma, but not benign like hemangioma. So hemangioendothelioma indicates this kind of intermediate malignant potential. But it's a little problematic because sometimes people think, oh, they're just different morphologic variants of one thing. Uh-uh. The epithelioid hemangioendothelioma is its own unique entity. Kaboshi form hemangioendothelioma is its own unique entity. Pseudomyogenic hemangioendothelioma, totally separate. They look separate, have different molecular, different behavior, everything. So that's one thing to remember. And never call something hemangioendothelioma NOS. Never do that. What that means is vascular lesion, and I don't know what it is. That's just, that's just wastebasket category is what. That's a case that needs sent for a consult. So these tumors were, I think, I think originally described in the lung, and people thought they were carcinomas for a long time. Because the thing about them is, and this case doesn't really showcase it as well as it should, because there are a lot of vessels here, but those vessels, I believe, are background vessels in this case, background vessels from the liver. Epithelioid hemangioendothelioma usually do not make vascular channels. So for a long time, people did not realize that they were vascular tumors, and it was actually Sharon Weiss who figured out in the early 1980s that these were vascular tumors, and she proved that with uh, immunostains and electron microscopy, which is a really a very forward advanced thing that no one had figured out before. They can be in the lungs and the liver, but also occasionally in skin and soft tissue. And um, they tend to present as multiple lesions. So I kind of was tricky here. I said there's, I just said a liver lesion, but oftentimes these patients show up with multiple lesions in the liver. 
the idea is they kind of metastasize locally or sometimes distantly before they're even discovered, but then they kind of just sit there. Oftentimes they're very slow growing and then sometimes they can advance later. But they, so they certainly are not as rapidly aggressive as angiosarcoma often is, but they are um, not benign. And among the different hemangiomas, this one seems to be more problematic than the others. It can metastasize, it can kill people. It is a, I'm in a patient group um, for epithelial hemangioendothelioma patients on Facebook. And, um, and it, it, you know, it really causes significant problem to those patients. So usually it makes nests and cords and chains of epithelioid cells. The, I probably should have put in a different example because it's really hard to tell here because you've got some background hepatocytes mingled in here that are not part of the tumor. You've got some background vessels. And I've actually, I never thought of it before for this case, but there is a subtype of, of this tumor that does occasionally make vascular channels. And I'm wondering if this is one of those. I think this case was from a long time ago before we had the molecular um, we knew the molecular features, but I'm trying to find a good area to show you the definitive cells. I saw it earlier. Let me look under the, the scope again and see if I can find it. But you tend to get epi you get these epithelioid cells in little cords and chains. But again, it's really complicated, I think, in the liver and the lung because you have background normal epithelial structures. Ah, and they often do this. It's filling the vessel, see? See, it's like growing through, plugging this vessel and growing through the wall and expanding out. That's how it often grows. It arises from a vessel and expands outward and can have like plugs of tumor cells filling the vessel. So here we can see that the nucleus is kind of out of the plane, but there's a vacuole in the middle and there's a little blob of stuff in the middle. So you get like fragments of broken down red cell in these little tiny spaces in the middle of the epithelioid cells and their cytoplasm. Here's another one right here. And what this is, is that this is the tumor cell and they're trying to make lumens and they can't quite make real lumens. So they make these little intravascular primitive lumens and little red cells get in there and get stuck in there and degenerated. And so that's called the blister cell, right? And that's the classic cell of epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. And in these cases, again, because the liver and all the stuff is intermingled together, it helps to actually see it under on a vascular immunostain to give you a better sense of the pattern. Um, I should have probably used a soft tissue example because they're a lot easier to see the cords and the chains of the tumor cells. And they can sometimes express keratin, which can be problematic because they look epithelioid and they can be keratin positive. So it's really easy to mistake them and call them um, carcinomas or things like that. And I do have another video I made recently about and with a different example of this entity in the skin, I believe. And I'll, I'll try to remember to put the link to that down below so that you can uh, go and check that out and see another example where it's more easy to tell. And so here's more of those blister cells. So liver and lungs are good sites. When you see that chondromyxoid stroma, always think of it. When you see little clusters and cords and chains of epithelioid cells, that's uh, epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. And these, uh, did we ask the molecular on this? Do you know what the molecular relationship is uh, for diagnosis? I think it's a translocation of one and three. Um, oh, I can't remember actually the chromosomes, but I think you're right. <laughs> um, but it's uh, uh, WWTR1 and CAMTA1. Yeah, WWTR1, CAMTA1, which uh, just that came out like right around the time I was graduating fellowship, actually. So um, that is a fusion that's in the majority. And then there's a small subset that have YAP1, YAP1, TFE3. And so that one will be positive for nuclear TFE3. And also that form uh, can actually make some vascular channels. I don't believe that I've ever seen a definitive example of that type before. Uh, but it is, it, usually I teach, if you see vascular channels made by tumor cells, then you're probably not dealing with epithelial hemangioendothelioma. But there, again, there's always going to be exceptions to the rules. So, so I think that that's, a, that's a, a good thing to keep in mind. Oh, there, that's the blister. So look at that one. And I would point out that um, a lot of different vascular tumors can have vacuoles, okay? Pretty much any, most uh, vascular lesions that have epithelioid looking endothelial cells, both benign and malignant, can make cytoplasmic vacuoles. Epithelioid angiosarcs can do it, epithelioid hemangiomas, spinal cell hemangiomas, and probably others. But the, the little red cell fragments floating in the vacuole, the blister cell, I don't feel like I've seen good examples of that. It, that the main thing that has that is epithelial hemangioendothelioma, E-H-E. So um, important um, entity to know about and to be able to diagnose and don't want to confuse it with angiosarcoma or benign things. And again, really problematic, particularly when it occurs in the liver or the lungs, it's quite problematic. And I think the fat in there, I imagine is background like fat or lipid from the hepatocytes, but I don't know for sure. All right.